So, the main crux of the stream I wanted to talk about was this absolutely epic video, epic clip, courtesy of, of course, The Shorb Show, featuring Brendan Shorb, where he gives an... Yeah, this is again. We've got to go from the top here. This show, I think, the show I'm doing right now, is pretty confusing. <clears throat> I call it a random show because I generally talk about random topics, but they, they, they tend to focus upon the LA stand-up comedy scene. I may sprinkle in some odd stuff here and there, but for the most part, it's what I focus on. But I also talk about random topics on my actual podcast, The Excellent Zinger Show, right? But it's on the same channel, so it can get a bit muddy, and you can think, oh, I'm just talking about the same shit again and again and again. Even though I've got, like, you know, nearly 3,000 videos, most of which don't really talk about comedy. But you know what? We progress. One of the weirdest things, I think, if my show's weird, I think the Shub show is even weirder because for whatever reason, the Shub show is basically, um, what was it? Below the Belt that he did on Showtime, which was essentially an MMA combat sports type of podcast show thing. And considering he's a former UFC fighter, <clears throat> it would make sense to have this show based on fighting because you could talk about anything from like new kit review, new, um, new, new kits, is it kits, however you call them? You know, New Jersey, whoever kits reveals. You can talk about controversy with fighters outside of the octagon, inside the octagon, um, potential match make matches, fight cards coming up, um, stuff concerning the business. I don't know. You can talk about so many things on the pod, on the show that can that kind of talks about combat sports and the culture around it. But for whatever reason, Brendan decided from very early to make his MMA show a quote unquote lifestyle show where he also speaks about his life and his stand-up comedy career, which is doesn't make any sense because you'd think if you were doing a MMA show, you wouldn't just people to focus on you speak about MMA because you don't speak about MMA anywhere else. You don't do it on the fire and the kid, you don't do it on the cleanest thing. So if you want people to hear your actual thoughts on MMA, let's go on the Shorb Show. But for whatever reason, he used the opportunity on the Shorb Show to just rant, complain, or expound upon things going on in within comedy and it just it just comes across really bizarre especially at this point at this point he basically is speaking about his shows he had come up in san francisco they had to cancel and the reasoning that he gave behind canceling these shows is legitimately one of the most insane things that i've ever heard of in my entire life as a reason to cancel a comedy show it legitimately was something that I couldn't believe what I was hearing. But it also might be an indication as to what type of person he is as a human. That he's so willing and able to lie about the most weirdest things. Like Because this doesn't make any sense why you would lie about this. Because we have no way of corroborating either. If it's a lie or if it's a truth. But, why, but most likely it is a lie. And why would you lie? Do you know what I mean? But this is basically Brendan Shaw trying to explain why he had to cancel a whole weekend full of shows in San Francisco. And hear how he tries to basically explain it. Prior to the pandemic, I would say in the seven years doing stand-up comedy, it is top five of all time. It was on freaking real. Um, Portland's interesting, man. Portland is a shit show. Portland is a shit show. Certain cities as a comic it's tough man like i had to reschedule my uh san francisco dates this coming weekend because they recalled the district attorney and people aren't going out to clubs and restaurants and we knew there's a problem because my brother who's my tour manager goes so i had to pause straight again but that to me is an automatic tell that somebody is lying when you start talking about something, you try to explain away the situation, and suddenly, just as you're talking, you happen to develop a weird scratch, a weird itch, um, a weird tightness that you have to kind of get out just at that moment. It's like, what? I, I, and again, just keep listening to why he has to cancel shows in San Francisco. Just keep listening to this. Restaurants. And we knew there was a problem because my brother, who's my tour manager, goes, man, I'm looking at hotels, like nice hotels. Like the, I think the Ace Hotel that we stayed in last time, which is, you know, the heart of San Francisco. San Francisco is not cheap by any means. Dude, you're talking 
some of these hotels, 60 bucks, 80 bucks. No one's coming to the city. So they wanted to push the dates till things are a little safer. So I'll have some uh, updates as far as when we're rescheduling San Francisco, but that's out of my control, man. Uh, these cities that wanted to defund the police and, you know, um, slap criminals on the wrist and then put them back on the streets. It's, it's, uh, there's some consequences there. And one of them is me rescheduling dates. That's what it is. Like in Portland, we stay. What do you call that? Is that narcissism? Is that a form of narcissism to legitimately, is that a form of, is that a narcissistic personality trait? to somehow believe that your show is worthy enough of a club contacting you directly and telling you only to reschedule your shows because the whole city is locked down because of what? Defunding the police. Because San Francisco is overrun by flipping warlords and gang members and shit. Per, you know, patrolling the streets with flipping hammers and fucking chainsaws. Like what? Stay downtown and you'll see I'll post the Portland bit. I had a whole bit that I wrote in the green room in Portland about how shitty the city is. Now as outside, so most, like I do the meet and greets, right? I meet all the people at the meet and greets. Nobody's staying downtown. They're all, yeah, we don't come down here. One time we come down here is do a comedy show or maybe a restaurant, but really, unless we have to be down here, nobody's, staying in downtown portland it is gotham city down there so you know everyone stay on the outskirts everybody's on the outskirts in portland but as far as uh you know just you know as a, as a city it's I, I i love portland man i mean i know they have their i just i just can't believe it i just can't believe it why would you lie about something that is just that does like clearly from what we can ascertain ticket sales in Portland for someone like a Brendan Shaw aren't going to be the greatest anyway because of just who he is and maybe the comedy that he does or maybe because he's not too famous whatever everyone has their places in the world where you just can't move tickets I'm sure as a performer everyone has a particular spot in the country in the world in a particular region where for whatever reason you just can't move tickets for love nor money it happens. But to create this entire narrative, as he would say, narrative, right? That somehow defunding the police and the district attorney and all this sort of shit is the reason why you can't perform in Portland. Excuse me? I'm sure there's protests happening there all the time, right? I'm sure Portland is a very politically active place. I'm pretty sure there are people out there every single weekend, you know, doing their anti fur flipping rallies and whatever and whatever else, Patriot Front, whatever. I'm sure there's all these flipping flashpoints happening all over the city. But what he's basically trying to say is that because these flashpoints are happening all over the city, these skirmishes, that there is no form of live entertainment. Live entertainers are just running away from flipping in Portland and not performing there. When we know that isn't the truth because we've got evidence of it. I think the same dates that Brendan basically said he cancelled the same place that he was going to play at, according to screenshot, they filled them with other events. So how can it be that it's not safe enough for you to go to perform, but it's safe enough for everybody else? The former UFC heavyweight, the former top 15, top 10 contender, and real badass, the guy that he says, because he always talks to, describes himself as, oh, I look like a hell's angel, right? The guy looks like a hell's angel. The guy that's not a soy boy, somehow... The club is saying it's too dangerous for you to go there, but it's okay for everybody else to go there. It's okay for Anna a Anya Zova. It's okay for flipping Austin Carr. It's okay for the Juneteenth Comedy Festival. They're okay to go there, but you can't. There are issues downtown, but um, it's such a freaking fun time, man. It's just, it. I have such a, it's a, I don't know what it is. I just love Portland. Not downtown, a little dicey. Like we had an off-duty uh, police officer come to the show, and he's like, "You boys going out there?" I'm like, "Okay, no, 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 I'm not. I'm not doing this again." He always makes up these fucking scenarios. I'm not doing this again. But I just can't believe the fucking lies. I just don't understand the lies. I really don't. 
It's what a bizarre set of lies. And it looks like other comedians, um, this guy called Joe Mande decided to chime in and say some quite snarky things about the whole thing. I thought it was pretty funny here. Um, again, this is courtesy of the Fighting the Kids subreddit. It says, I've heard that San Francisco, I've heard that things in San Francisco are really dicey right now because of district attorneys getting recalled. Despite the risk, however, I have decided to still do my show at the Verdi Club this Friday night. I just hope to find people in the Bay Area as brave as I am and choose to come out. Thank you. <laughs> I think that was absolutely awesome, but I just can't get past the lies, man. Like, I think I mentioned it in another show that how um there was a guy that I remember going to school with, a kid who used to always do that sort of stuff. He just used to lie about the most weirdest things. And maybe it was a you know compulsive liar anyway in general, but he used to lie about strange things. I remember one time we were kids. We must have been like, I don't know, 12 or something. And he just made up a lie that he was in his room with a girl. And for whatever reason, I guess we were all so fucking full with flipping testosterone and just brimming at the teat to see something naked. We all kind of believed it. We just believed that he had a girl in his room. We were 12 years old. Why would you have a girl in your room? We all kind of brought up in a pretty decent area. We weren't brought up in a trap house. You know what I mean? They're just regular kids with regular families, with like two parents in the family. Um, someone's always at home. You're not just going to randomly bring a girl in. It's not going to happen. But whatever reason, we all believed it. To the point where we all kind of like were creeping around the window. And he was like, oh, shh, don't make any noise. She's going to all this sort of nonsense and we were standing at the window looking like and he was clearly just falling around with a pillow underneath the sheets but he kept but he was such a persistent liar and he did it so often that we all believed it and we were kind of bought into a lie and he just kept lying and, and to be honest to him to be honest but looking back at it too he was obviously a compulsive liar because even when we were older he just kept lying about random shit like Oh, do you have a fiver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, no, I don't actually have a pound. It's like, what? Why would you? I don't know. 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 I don't get it, man. I really don't get it. I understand you have to fake it till you make it. But I also don't get the whole, like, comedy business lying to the fans because none of us can really corroborate what he's saying anyway. Either, either way. If the DA thing is true or not, we don't know. We can't prove it either way. So why even mention it? Your fans don't give a shit. They just want to see you perform. Can you go or not? Oh, it's a bummer. You're not be able to perform. You won't be there. Cool. We'll see you next time. Move on. No one really actually cares. So he's clearly lying for someone. I just don't know who it is for. I don't know if they actually really believe it. Uh, just a bizarre thing to say. <laughs> 